I was compelled today because I recently had some interesting conversations to talk about relations. <laughs> recently, I had some interesting conversations that compelled me to talk about relations. Now, when we talk about relationships, especially, you know, the snuggle up season, you know, that silent night, right? When I was boxing in Boxing Kings, I remember I was at a gym, several gyms, but one in particular in San Marcos, Texas, I was at this gym and they would put me in the ring with these uh, Latinos, these Mexican fighters that were a little shorter than me. And they'd be throwing hooks, they'd be, you know, throwing at me. And I was, you know, I was carrying my own, I was ducking, I was diving, I was shooking and jiving, I was slipping and dodging, I was, you know, punch, don't get punched back, keep your hands up, right, protect yourself at all times. And I remember that sometimes there would be coaches that would come to the gym and they would notice us and they would kind of like scouting, they would be scouting, you know, like a coach would be scouting for a future fighter. And I remember I had so much aggression in the gym. I had so much, so many sessions in the gym. I was what you would call a gym rat. I couldn't get out of the boxing gym. I, I somehow was like getting all of my stress, all of my anger, all of my frustration in that relationship that I had been in for so many years. So many fears, so many things that I couldn't talk about, that I couldn't even write down in a journal on a page. I was taking out all of my rage in the gym. And so I would hit the heavy bag, I would hit the, you know, the double end bag, the, the speed bag, and then I would, you know, get in the ring. They would put me in there with other fighters and I was holding my own. And one time that there was a, there was a coach that came by and I didn't even know he was scouting for fighters. He looked at me. And he was just observing me and I, I heard them, you know, talking to each other in Spanish. And then he, he'd be pointing over in my direction and I was like, okay. And I'm hitting the bag and he's looking at me. I'm like, okay. And then I was jump roping. While I was jump roping, he came up next to me. He said, hey man, how old are you? I told him how young I was and he said, how long you been training here? I said, oh, you know, I've been training for some months now. He said, okay. He said, uh, he said, you got a girlfriend? I said, yeah, I got a lady. He said, you got a lady at home? I was like, yeah, I do. He said, leave her. I was like, what? It was like the, the DJ rewind the record. Like, <laughs> rewind, like the DJ stopped the record. <laughs> he said, leave her. Now, in that moment when he said, leave your girlfriend, I didn't know what he was talking about. I was like, what are you talking? What do you mean? I just kind of like blew him off. I was like, what? what? In my mind, I blew him off. But it was like he planted a splinter in my mind. There was a, a little groove in my neural network that he kind of dropped a seed there. And I didn't understand it at the time why he was telling me to leave my relationship. But I realized only later on, it was the potential he saw in me to go further if I wasn't in that situation. Now, he couldn't have known. There's no way in the world that he would have been psychic enough to peer into a crystal ball to know that this potential fighter, this potential pro or whoever he saw in his eyes was going through one of the most toxic destructive, sabotaging relationships of my entire life, right? When I was getting out all my stress and strife in the gym. But later on, I realized what he meant. It was only just a man, almost maybe a father figure, maybe somebody who just saw a young man who could go so far if he didn't have something holding him back, something he was shackled to. And at that point in time, it was a relationship that for me and for her was lackluster. We both didn't understand how to get out of this situation. We had to drink bottles of wine and, and, and do substances and, and do things just to have a conversation, right? Just to have a genuine heart to heart or human connection, we had to have something that was between us. <laughs> 
And it reminds me of a Bible verse. There's a Bible verse in Proverbs. I don't know if you've heard this one. Stop me if you've heard this one. It's Proverbs 25 verse 24. I'm pretty sure. You can look it up. Proverbs verse 25 or Proverbs chapter 25 verse 24. I'm pretty sure. And it basically says that it is better to live on your roof, on the corner of a rooftop, than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. I'm going to say this one more time, right? While everyone's tucked in and everyone's sleeping, it is better to live on your roof, right? With thunder, with hail, with lightning, with rain, with snow, sleet, all the weather conditions. It's better to live on the corner of your roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Now, I want to say this because King Solomon or whoever wrote this verse in Proverbs must have been knowledgeable about relationships. He must have been around the block a couple times. To be able to write a verse like that in the Bible, that's probably not your first rodeo, right? <laughs> you probably know a little bit about what you're talking about. And when I read that verse, it is better to live on your roof and, and brave all the weather conditions on your roof than to share a house. He didn't say a home, right? He could have said a home, but a house is not a home. You know the difference? This building, this house, it doesn't mean it's a home, right? When me, I was with my significant other, we had a house. We didn't have a home, right? It was a townhouse. It wasn't a home. So me, I was struggling at the time. And me struggling financially, that's not fair for her. Why should she have to deal with someone who is just finding out who he is and struggling and figuring out what this means and figuring out life and all this stuff? Why should that be fair to her? So both of us were just going through it in a downward spiral. And his words later on, when we finally separated after a decade of going back and forth, up and down, in and out, arguing, debating, discussing, just feuding with each other, I finally realized what he meant. And I understood that sometimes it's okay to be alone. Isolation is okay. You can have a dream of the family, the, the picket fence, the Christmas lights, right? You can have a dream, you can have a vision. That could be all well and good. But sometimes it's okay to be alone. Don't feel that you have to be in a relationship with someone because that makes you somehow worthy. D don't, don't think that you're not worthy if you're not currently with a partner. If you don't currently have circumstances in, in your life that would allow you to be in a situation with someone and you're not struggling, it's okay. Take some time. Figure yourself out. Realign, right? It's so divine to be in isolation, to be able to get better information, right? But when you find yourself stuck in relations, in a situationship, that, like they say, right? <laughs> it can be very complicating. And it can be very conflicting. And sometimes it can be suffocating. It can be very constricting. But in order to breathe again, you have to become your own friend. So I tell you this myself because <laughs> I had to do it. And it was one of the hardest things in my life that I ever did was to cut those cords, right? But when you're thinking about, should I hold on to this or should I cut these cords? Ask yourself, what can you afford? Look at yourself, project yourself five years down the road. Is this what you want? <laughs> in this humble abode, five years down the road, is this what I want? Is this really what I desire? Am I smothering this kindling 
do I still have that fire? Right? So, <laughs> that's going to be a decision that you might have to make or not. But, hey, <laughs> all is well, all is okay. And much love and have a beautiful day. Thanks for listening. Share this with someone who needs to hear it. Keep that grateful, thankful spirit. And we'll see you again.